Lots happened in the real estate market the last couple of months. Is the bottom falling out? Well, stay tuned. I'm gonna talk about it right now. Hey everybody, Dietrich Williams, Realtor with Compass, Baldwin Hills, California. Welcome back to another edition of Info on the Go, the show where I give tips, tricks, and insight on how to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in Southern California. If that sounds like something that you are interested in, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap that bell so that you're notified every time I upload new content to YouTube. Now, over the past couple of weeks, I would say maybe the past month or so, there's a lot of speculation that the real estate market is starting to crash. It's simply not true. I'm gonna tell you why, so we're gonna talk about supply and demand, interest rates, and inflation. Those are three things that we really wanna pay attention to, right? So let's just talk about the supply and demand issue. From a supply standpoint, we are roughly four to five million units from basically normalization, right? And that's that if everybody who was in the market looking for a house could buy a house, it, we would need about four to five million homes to meet all of that demand, which we simply just do not have. Housing starts, which is really builders constructing new homes are really low right now. And for various reasons, the cost of lumber, there's not a lot of places that you can actually build. So undeveloped land that can be purchased and interest, right? So lots of people may be looking for homes but can't necessarily afford to buy a newly constructed home and it costs money for builders to make these homes so that's one thing demand is what it is right so people are always going to be in the need to have a place to stay whether you're going to be renting or buying but for the sake of this we're talking about buying right so there are a lot of people who are in the market looking to buy homes because one they've got some extra money <laughs> that they stacked up during this whole COVID thing. So it could have been an inheritance. It could be stimulus checks that they saved up. It could be anything, right? So some people cashed out 401ks, the list goes on and on and on. As such, there is some demand out there in terms of wanting to purchase homes. And I think that became even more prevalent when COVID hit, because when we got the stay at home orders, staying at home, homeschooling, a lot of us recognize that the homes that we had weren't adequately, weren't adequate enough in terms of space, right? We needed more space to accommodate everybody being in the house at one time. So home offices, all that type of stuff kicked in and then the man is still there. Now, did people go out to kind of the suburbs? Yeah, that, probably a smart move just because it's probably more affordable. And since many of us don't have to commute to work every single day, that be kind of became the new norm. So supply and demand issues. Remember, I talked about this and I don't know how many episodes in the past. Economics 101, when supply is low and demand is high, there tends to be pressure on prices to increase those things upward and vice versa. So we're dealing with that right now from a supply demand aspect. The second thing we really wanna pay attention to is inflation. Now, I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. You've probably heard this term before, but let's just say that you have not, and you're green to this area. No offense to anybody out there, right? But inflation is really the loss of purchasing power of your dollar. So every year, it costs suppliers and manufacturers more money to produce goods and services. They tend to pass that down to us and our money loses value. So you, if you are in finance, you study time value of money, I won't get into that. But for the fat past 50 plus years, inflation is over around 2%. So that means your dollar, my dollar, loses 2% of its value every single year. Side note, if you work as a W-2 employee, your, your boss, your employer, has probably mentioned to you every year around kind of when your review is, that they will give you what's called a cost of living increase. That is essentially so that your income and inflation get offset by one another. It's not because they like you so much. What they're really trying to do is make sure you don't go search for another job because you realize, hey, I'm spending more money, but I'm not making more money. What gives? I might need to go look for another job. They don't want you to do that. Now, the Fed is keeping a close eye on inflation right now, and it's a little bit higher than normal. If it continues to uptick, um, expect for the Fed to step in and do something. 
What do they normally do when inflation happens? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's the whole purpose of this show, to give you information, to arm you and equip you so that you make sound, rational decisions. Now, when the Fed is looking at inflation, one of the things that they will do to curb that is they'll increase what's called the Fed funds rate. So you may hear people say, oh, the Fed is going to increase the interest rate. They're not necessarily talking about mortgages. They're talking about the interest that banks charge to one another to borrow money. I won't get into that, but sometimes the banks pass that down to you. So if that interest rate increases, the banks have to offset that cost some way. And who pays for it? That guy or gal and this guy right here. We tend to pay for that, right? So that's a way to kind of stave off inflation so that there is, I would say less incentive to borrow, right? So there's not a lot of money that's shooting around that, tend to that tends to have downward pressure on inflation. Another thing that you really wanna pay attention to, and I've definitely talked about this in past episodes, is part of quantitative easing. Now, what is, quant what is quantitative easing? That's really the central bank or the Fed saying, hey, we wanna tighten or loosen the money supply. So what we may do, which they did during COVID, is the Fed says, oh no, employers are laying people off, furloughing people. That means they won't have money to spend, which means the economy can't stay afloat. What can we do? I got it. We're gonna purchase mortgage-backed securities and 10-year treasury notes. That's exactly what they did, to the tune of about $7 billion worth. So the Fed put $7 billion out into the economy, took the bonds and treasuries and all those things off of the market. But at some point, the Fed is gonna want that money back. They're not a profit or nonprofit agency, or are they? Either way, they're gonna want that money back, right? So what they do is they start selling those bonds off, especially the 10-year treasury. This is why it's important for you to pay attention because the 10-year treasury and mortgages are directly correlated. As they sell those bonds off into the market, interest rates for mortgages go that way. As they purchase those bonds from the, mortgage, from the market, interest rates go that way, which is why our rates have been hovering at historic lows about right now, because they've been purchasing these bonds. But the Fed has said that they're going to slow that down and eventually they'll stop purchasing those bonds. After that happens, they're gonna watch the economy, see how it goes, and guess what comes next? They're gonna sell those bonds back to the market and pull the money out of the market back into the Fed, right? So that's gonna have upward pressure on interest rates. So right now we're about what, I wanna say roughly between 3.1 and 3.2 in terms of 30 year um, mortgage rates. The Fed has said that if interest rates get to about 3.7, that's where we're gonna see a real cooling off in prices. But the Mortgage Bankers Association and a lot of other analysts have said that interest rates into 2022 are probably gonna reach a high of about 3.4 or maybe 3.5 at the highest. So we're still not at 3.7 to see this drastic um, reduction in prices that everybody is kind of looking for. Consequently, if you're one of those people who's waiting for the market to crash because you wanna purchase a home and you think it's gonna happen anytime soon, <sighs> stop holding your breath, you're gonna asphyxiate yourself. It's not gonna happen anytime soon. I'll never say never, but probably won't happen anytime soon. I'm sorry. Now, that's not to say that there will not be downward pressure on prices. We're seeing that happen right now. And part of that is because this industry is seasonal. So just like clothing stores roll out their spring, fall, summer clothing lines, real estate is kind of the same way. So let's just start with where we are right now. Ta -da! In the fourth quarter. Man, it is almost Christmas time. Where in the world did the time go? Oh, gosh, I can't believe this year is almost over. Okay, but at any rate, in the fourth quarter, people tend to take a step back from real estate. So if a person is a seller, they probably don't want people trouncing around their house during Christmas time for kind of obvious reasons. You put COVID on top of that, <laughs> step back. Incidentally, buyers also tend to take a step back because they're probably gonna use some of that money that they've been saving to purchase Christmas gifts, to go on vacations, 
the list goes on and on. So you're gonna see some people leave the market during the fourth quarter because of the holidays. And it happens like this every single year. That's kind of what we're seeing right now. So one of those indicators that we look at is what's called pending status. And so that's when you see a property on the MLS or in one of those ports, like the one that starts with a Z, I won't mention that name. When you start to see pending in terms of housing, that means that 30, 60, 90 plus days down the line, we're probably gonna see a closed transaction. That lets us know the health of the real estate market in terms of sales volume. Well, pending sales have been decreasing the past couple of months. It's a no brainer, right? We're not expecting to see that happen in the fourth quarter that sales are gonna just skyrocket. It's not like 2020 when our industry was off. We're starting to get back to normal, right? So that's one of the things that you're seeing right now is pending sales are waning. And some people think that because of that, the market is starting to crash. It's not really the case. We're just getting back to normal. Again, seasonality. Now, when we get into the new year, what typically happens? New Year's resolutions. Oh, I wanna get my body right. Oh, I'm gonna buy this new car. Oh, I'm gonna purchase a house this year. So that interest begins to tick up. And around the springtime, it peaks up a little bit more because people are, especially if you've got kids, you're going on spring break, you're taking vacations. So your interest in looking at homes, you have a little bit of time to go out there and look. By the summertime though, that interest is peaked way up here. And incidentally, so have prices typically because again, supply and demand, lots of demand during the summertime. Why is that? Well, again, we're going back to school age children. If you got children who are in school, you don't want to move and have to potentially pull them out of school because you move to another district. So what you may do is wait until the summer when they're out of school, purchase the house, and maybe you move them into a better school or a better school district. And then roughly around that first week of school, we start to see it kind of take a little bit of a dive. Now, historically, school has kind of started in like September-ish, but for the past couple of years, it started closer toward the mid or end of August. So that seasonality has kind of moved back a little bit. So we're seeing that, that decline happen a little bit earlier. I mean, think about it. School starts earlier, the decline starts earlier. It just is what it is. And those, kind of things in the industry happen year after year after year. So right now, we're just seeing something that's happening that is normal for our industry. Abnormal compared to last year because sales in the fourth quarter were just so crazy, but normal for where we typically would be at year after year. So again, it's not that the housing market is crashing, it's just we're getting back to normal and some other things are happening to kind of balance everything out. So just be patient, be cool. If you are in the market looking to purchase a house, don't necessarily just jump out because this could be your opportunity to purchase a home and potentially get a discount because there's not a lot of competition out there. If you're selling a home, you may want to think about stepping off of the market unless you absolutely have to sell. I know those things are counterintuitive to one another, but I don't just help buyers, I also help sellers. So I have to figure out a way to help you both out so that you both can win. Don't shoot the messenger. It is what it is. Now, I hope that helps put some things in context about where the market is and potentially where we're headed over the next several years. Again, it could be a great time to buy and or sell. It might not be a great time to buy and or sell. It really just depends on your situation, what your needs and desires are, as well as what your wants are, okay? So use that information and stop listening to, to every YouTube real estate agent or an investor or speculator who has an uncle whose cousin was a real estate agent back in 72, and they said this happened, and then stop. Get the facts, get the information, get the data because the numbers won't lie. They simply won't. Your cousin's uncle who sold real estate in 72, they might tell you some fabrication, but the numbers typically won't lie. So arm yourself with the information, make an informed decision. And I'll see you guys next week.